keep waving, Philip, Colin lip reader reveals the Queen's advice to her husband and all the other little royal asides picked up on Harry and Meghan's big day. Meghan couldn't stop saying wow, and the words amazing and unbelievable were used on several occasions, reveals expert lip reader Terry Ruane, who was watching TV footage of the proceedings. Here are some of the comments he observed being made. As guests arrive, a woman with Tom Parker Bowles is on her phone, saying, I am not hungover today, so that's really good. George Clooney greets James Corden, telling him, you look great. Meanwhile, Amal Clooney is very chatty, variously saying, oh, how sweet and how annoying dash but it's not clear what she's referring to. Harry's uncle, Earl Spencer, chats with his wife about a friend who works in Africa. Actor Idris Elba jokes about the venue, saying, it's not bad. As William and Harry walk towards the chapel, William indicates that either his shoes or trousers are tight. In the chapel, Princess Beatrice looks around, asking her father, Prince Andrew, where's mum? Referring to Sarah, Duchess of York, who is seated diagonally across from them on the other side of the aisle. The heavily pregnant Zara Tyndall, daughter of Princess Anne, tells her husband Mike she needs the toilet. David Furnish, husband of Sir Elton John, comments on weddings, saying, That's the greatest thing about weddings, they're supposed to be, beautiful, but you have to. Before the camera cuts away, Harry nervously asks William, Is she here? William replies no, not yet, I don't know actually. William then suggests they ought to stand up when Meghan's mother, Doria Ragland, comes into the chapel. Harry quips that he wants to see Meghan and her dress before my hair goes grey. At the altar, as Prince Charles hands Meghan to Harry, the groom replies, Thank you, Pa. Standing side by side, Harry and Meghan gaze at each other and the prince says, You look amazing. I missed you. Harry checks she is okay as he lifts her veil over her head, asking, all right? During the service, at one point the Duchess of Cornwall appears to get lost in the order of service book, seeking help from the Duchess of Cambridge, who replies, I don't know. Leaving the chapel, at the top of the steps, Meghan asks Harry, do we kiss? Harry replies with a discreet yeah. The Queen tells Prince Philip, keep waving. Meghan's mother turns to Charles and describes the service as superb. Meghan appears to be overwhelmed by the size of the crowd, saying, wow, how busy, unbelievable. Awed by the whole experience, she repeats the word wow. At the end of the carriage ride, Meghan says, so much fun, putting her hand to her chest. Finally, as the couple pass the last of the cheering crowds and into the private royal gardens, Harry says, I'm ready for a drink now. Harry was meanwhile spotted telling his new wife he was ready for the reception as their carriage drew back into the grounds of Windsor Castle. As the horse-drawn carriage finished its climb up the long walk, Harry quipped, I'm ready for a drink now. Meghan was obviously impressed by the crowds who had lined the streets exclaiming wow, as they emerged from the castle grounds. They also swapped remarks about some of the signs being held by members of the public, with Harry commenting huge at one point during the procession, and Meghan saying how sweet. Lip readers have also revealed how the groom was supported by his brother ahead of the ceremony. Harry, 33, said I'm alright in a heartwarming exchange with his brother, 35, as they entered the church, but joked my trousers are too tight as he complained his military uniform was on the small side. As they waited for the bridge to arrive, a nervous Harry asked his brother, Is she here? Wills replied, No not yet, I don't know actually. Meghan then arrived and, after entering the church with her flower girls and page boys, was walked up the aisle by Prince Charles, who stepped in at the last minute. Harry said, Thanks Pa, as Charles and Meghan arrived at the altar. Meanwhile, a body language expert said Meghan was the strength of her wedding ceremony and was constantly reassuring her new husband. Despite the whole experience being completely new for Meghan, who today became the Duchess of Sussex, she did not display a single sign of anxiety or nervousness, body language expert Judy James said. Ms. James said Harry performed about 12 nervous self-touching body checks, like pulling at his gloves and wringing his hands, within a few paces of getting out his car after arriving at St. George's Chapel in Windsor. However Meghan, the latest member of the royal family, maintained complete calm throughout the ceremony to help Harry through it. Ms. James said. Meghan was amazing. Walking up the aisle by herself, I looked for every smallest sign of suppressed anxiety and nervousness. There was absolutely nothing. I think she probably saw it as her role to help Harry through it rather than the other way around. She sat with her hand over his for quite a bit of the service as though she was reassuring him. To me, she was the strength when it came to the day and the actual performance. Both princes wore the black and gold uniforms of the Blues and Royals, similar to Harry's outfit for Will's wedding to Kate Middleton in 2011. The uniforms they wore were tailored at Dijon Skinner on Seville Row, with the Queen giving them permission to wear their army uniforms to the ceremony. Harry has decided to sport a beard, despite speculation he would shave it off in line with army rules that ban facial hair. But as the prince is no longer a serving member of the forces, he is allowed to break with convention. As Harry's best man, Prince William will be responsible for handing over the rings, which were earlier revealed to be the work of Cleve and Company. 
Harry is returning the favor to his younger brother after acting as his best man seven years ago. Prince Harry will become the second Duke of Sussex when he and Meghan have walked down the aisle, with his new wife becoming the first ever Duchess of the County in history. Harry's frock coat is made from blue doeskin. It is single-breasted in style with a stand-up collar, complete with figured braiding of regimental pattern. The uniform was cut and made by hand. The sleeve pattern is intricate in detail and took one person one week to complete. The frock coat is ranked to major with large gold embroidered crowns. The badge on the left chest is pilot's wings chained whilst serving with the Army Air Corps for flying Apache helicopters. The four metal ribbons below the wings are, from left to right, K, C, V, O, Afghanistan with rosette the Queen's Golden Jubilee and the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. The trousers, officially called overalls, are made from a blue and black wool barathea and are fastened by a leather strap and buckle underneath the boot.